And uh, today we'll continue with how to build up marriage and family. And I want to repeat um, part of what we talked about yesterday, uh, which is very important. And I hope you keep this in mind, that the difference between male and female, that is uh, the problem of many marriages, because people don't understand the difference. <clears throat> that generally, males are interested in action and females are more interested in family and relationship and and uh, talking about the feelings and then someone understanding them uh, that is very important uh, generally for female and then males don't like to talk about feelings uh, they like to handle it themselves because to them talking about the feeling it's like a sign of weakness that is saying, oh, I, I need help, I have un I'm unhappy, I, I'm sad. So uh, for them to talk about that is like saying that they are weak. And most males don't like to talk about uh, their feelings. But females have to talk about their feelings. When they have feelings, they want to talk about it. They, uh, that's also part of... Um, uh, God's put that nature in men and women uh, that for, uh, for specific reasons that males would be more interested in action and that's why most of the uh, business in the world uh, are built by males and uh, <clears throat> males are generally more interested in work and female are more interested in family, even though today now many female do have jobs. But still, uh, most female would see family as the first priority, and work is the second priority. And for male, work is the first priority, and family is the second. And uh, now this big difference <coughs> uh, caused many problems. Now, before the fall, there was no problem because God created man and woman that we had we had perfect love before the fall of mankind that uh, the man would even though he's interested in work he would still care about his wife and love his wife and um, and then the woman uh, that she can talk about the feelings and then the, the man would respond to her uh, even though at that time uh, it was not the man's uh, main interest to talk about feeling, but because of his love, he would talk about, he would listen to the wife. But after the fall, men lost the interest of listening to the wife. And the women, when they are unhappy or when they face problems, they want to talk about it. For men, uh, generally, men like to talk about things away from themselves. They like to talk about news, uh, 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 like uh, games or sports uh, activities. So you notice that uh, uh, in many parks that you know among the Chinese we can see men gathering together to take uh, pictures uh, and you find few women among them. And then you see also among the Chinese that they play chess in the uh, parks and we notice few women and when there are women the women would talk you know they just sit there and chat so that's the interest of most women and um, now what is the problem there because women pay more attention to relationship to the family and uh, and then when she notices that there are some problems then the woman would be unhappy about it, and then she wants to talk about it. And, uh, but then the man generally doesn't like to talk about that. And, and what happened is then uh, the man would just say, well, well, forget about it. You just, you know, don't pay attention to that and uh, just neglect that person, you know. So the man would usually say that. And the woman doesn't like that. And then she would become uh, unhappy and emotional. When she is emotional, then her expression would be show would show her emotion and her words would show her 
emotions, and then the man would become unhappy, and then the man would have anger. So we notice that in most uh, marriages, what happens is the woman have a lot of things she likes to talk about, but the man doesn't like to talk about. And then what happens is then there is less and less connection. Then the woman doesn't feel connection, and then she has more emotions. And then the man would complain that the woman is very emotional now. Uh, before marriage, uh, she, is, she was very happy. She was very free because at that time they did not face any problem of, you know, uh, like uh, after marriage they have to face daily problems. So the woman would start to talk about the problems. And then many men would lose interest uh, in a wife. And then he would say, well, when I come across this girl, now she, uh, she is so free and so happy. And we can just talk about things and, and he likes that. Men usually like just to have fun and, and uh, talk freely and joke around. And then the wife doesn't, you know, has interest in the family. And that's why, you know, many families have this conflict and some families will have the conflict ending in affairs. And as Christians, we don't want this to happen because when this happens, what happens is uh, the marriage is broken up or at least the marriage is unhappy. And then when a person is unhappy, his relationship with God and with people with a problem, and Satan will find a way to attack the family. So when marriages have problem, then uh, the marriage, you know, that both the, the man and the woman would suffer, and then also the, uh, they give the devil a foothold, and then the, the marriage would have problem, and then, um, that's how Satan attacks the family and attacks the church. So when, uh, now when Christians understand this, when we understand that God has a perfect plan in our life, that if we love God, we follow God, obey God, and serve God, God is very happy. And yesterday I talked about four motivations. First, God is full of love and He is almighty. Everything is in is in his hand and then second that um, he loves us very much that we are precious in his sight and number three when we uh, trust in him we love him we obey him and serve him he is very happy and he will bless us and then for the fourth point is that when we sin when we don't follow him when we don't have a close relationship with him we don't obey and don't serve him there will be there will always be destruction so this, I hope this teachings will motivate us to say, I want to have a close relationship with God. I want to trust in God and love Him and serve Him and, uh, you know, and do the best of our lives so that we can enter uh, God's perfect plan. So our life will go higher and higher and we can bless more people. At the same time, we are blessed by God. So I hope that all Christians will say, yes, I want to follow God's perfect plan. Um, especially the pastors. I hope all the pastors will say, yes, I want to enter God's perfect plan so that I'm blessed by God and I can bless people. That's what Christians should, you know, have to go for in their life so that their life will go higher and higher. But because of this difference between male and female, and even many pastors don't understand this, many pastors will say, how come my wife has so many complaints? How come she's always so emotional? How come she demands so much of me? And she wants to talk with me so much. And the, even the pastor would like the wife to be submissive and don't talk about any of these things and you just take care of that and then we can live happily together. And many pastors don't understand that. When we don't listen to the wife, the wife would have a lot of unhappy feelings inside. Now, God created woman so that she would have, you know, she cares about relationships, she wants to love people, at the same time she wants to be loved. When she finds that she can, you know, she 
cannot talk about her feelings and she doesn't find herself being loved by the husband or the children, then the wife would feel frustrated and unhappy. And many men think that this is the fault of the woman. And they didn't realize that the faults come from both sides, that the men did not listen to the woman and then the woman would feel frustrated. Now, when we want to build up the relationship, as the Bible tells us, to love your wife as Christ loves the church and gives his life for the church. So if husbands love the wife and say, I want to give my life to you. I want to care about you. I want to listen to you. I want to build you up so that you live a happy life, so that we both are happy together. So if the husband is willing to do that, to listen to the wife and care about her and love her and help, help her all the time, then the wife would feel loved and then the family would become better and better. So I hope we all have this desire to build up the family like the Bible says. Now, but many Christians will say, how come, you know, the wife doesn't submit to me and just stay quiet? You know, if you pay attention to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 and 22, verse 22 says that the wife submit to your husband. But verse 21 says, submit to one another. That the husband should also submit to the wife. It's not just the wife submitting to the husband. The wife, the husband will submit to the wife and listen to the wife and care about the wife and respond to her needs and her feelings. That way, when the woman feels comforted, when she feels loved, then she will have love, more love for the husband. And both sides have to build up this loving relationship. Both sides have to tell each other, I love you, I care about you, you are very precious. It's very important to build up this relationship, to express that I love you, I care about you, because in the kingdom of God, God loves us and He wants us to love Him. And He wants Christians to love one another. That is a great commandment. So we love one another, especially in the family, that when we get married, we should prepare to love the spouse and the children. So we pay attention to the, to the, to the spouse and to the children and listen to them and care about them. And then they feel loved. And then the family will be filled with love. And also we we'll explain this. Uh, as a uh, husband, we have the responsibility to guide the family and say, we want to build a loving family. A family with love. We love each other. We care about each other. We uh, listen to each other. And then we build up, build up each other and we uh, enter God's plan together and we all serve God together. That is the perfect marriage that will build up a relationship of love and serve God together and we love each other and build up each other. That is the, the goal of God in our marriages. So marriage is not just for, um, just for you know, that uh, we get together and have marriage and have children. Uh, it's not just that, but to glorify God, just as our lives. The goal of our lives uh, are to glorify God, to serve God, to help people to, to follow God. That is the, you know, the goal of our life. So I hope we all understand that. Now how, when we, when we understand this problem, then how do we build up? How do we build up the marriage? For the men, then we need to listen to the wife, care about the wife, and talk to her uh, gently with love and, sh and tell her that we love her, that you are important in my sight, and I want to build up this marriage, and listen to the wife and respond to her and face the problems together, to overcome the problems together. And then the wife should also understand that Man generally doesn't like to talk about feelings that much. Then the woman would uh, learn to not to uh, nag 
not to repeat yourself. Now, this has to come uh, from both sides. The husband need to listen and then have an agreement. Now, I have an agreement with my wife that she said that, you know, uh, when I, when I uh, do anything wrong and when I'm willing to say I'm sorry and then I, I, I'm willing to work on it in the future, then she's happy with that. And then she will stop uh, talking about the problem. So that's a good news to me because many husbands uh, find that the wife will keep talking about the problem even when they apologize, even when they say, okay, I'll, I'll pay attention to it next time. But my wife is aware of that. And I also let her know that, that I like her to be more brief. Uh, when I heard something, I told her, I've hurt you. And then uh, she would stop talking about the same thing over uh, and over. Now, but we talk about feelings. We talk about positive feelings that, you know, we spend time talking about those things. But as far as problem, when we solve it, then we can stop there. We don't need to keep talking about the problem. Of course, we want to talk about how we overcome the problem next time. For instance, now this is a common problem of many men. Sometimes we are late, late when we, you know, said to my wife, to our wives, and say, "Okay, I'll meet you there at four o'clock," and then, but we were late, and then we just hope that the wife will understand, and then don't say anything. But the wife might be unhappy, and then we should apologize, and I'm sorry, and then, and then we we. Uh, and then we want to work on it. It's very important that we'll say, okay, next time I, I will calculate my time more precisely. For instance, sometimes, you know, I think of going out with her and then I thought that I can be, you know, I, I'm ready, I, you know, I'm dressed up already. Uh, so in five minutes, uh, if I know it's time, I can be ready. But sometimes I found that it w I really could not be ready. You know, sometimes there are some interruptions and I had to go to the restroom first and so it takes more than five minutes and then I was late. So next time I will allow 10 minutes or 15 minutes. When I know that I have to do something, I'm prepared to go out, then I won't be late. So it's very important that we find a way so that the problem will not, uh, will not um, happen again. So that is something all men and women should work on, how to prevent future problems. <clears throat> because if the problems come back again and again, then it could cause conflict in the family. <clears throat> so there should be communication about how to talk with each other, how to overcome overcome problems so that they won't come back again, at least to reduce the number of conflicts in the future. So, and also talk about, you know, how to like how to educate the children, how to talk with them. All this need to be talked about. That the husband should not assume that, okay, we're married and you just take care of that and then don't talk, you know, just do it yourself. We should both talk ab about the, uh, the problems and also how to solve the problem in the future. And also, that is just problem solving. Marriage is not just about problem solving. Marriage is also about uh, building up relationship, building up uh, a love relationship. Just like with God. With God, it's not just a relationship with God. It's not just saying, okay, I repent of my sins and I obey you. That is not the greatest commandment. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. So it's not just obedience. So some people thought, okay, I... Uh, I believe in God and I just obey God. But the greatest obedience is loving God, to treasure God. God, you are so great. I delight in you. So in the Psalms, we can see that the psalmist 
declare the goodness of God and how they really delight in God, how they declare the goodness of God, that God is full of compassion, is full of goodness, how good God is. And so they delight in God. It's not just saying, okay, I don't sin and I just obey God and I don't commit sins. It's not just about that. So in a marriage also, it's not just about not making mistakes, but it's also about how to build up a loving relationship so that we'll love each other, we'll enjoy each other, just like the relationship with God. We'll enjoy the relationship with God. It's not a painful experience just to obey God and put down our sinful habits and just obey God. That, then it becomes a painful experience for some people. But we should say, God is full of goodness. I can enjoy God. I can enjoy the peace of God, the love of God, the kindness of God. I can enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit comforts me. So we should enjoy the presence of God. And so we should enjoy our wives also, that, that we delight in our wife, that we make her happy, then we can enjoy life. If a person cannot enjoy his marriage, then um, it's, everything is just work. You know, then he has to work and make, to make money to provide for the family and come home and do more work and it's just work. Life, God doesn't just want us to work. God wants us to enjoy Him and enjoy each other. So when we understand that, then we want to build up uh, romance. Now some people think there is no more romance after marriage because there is so much argument, so many fights, so there is no more romance. Now I, I show you a Bible verse yesterday. Psalm 518, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. So let her be blessed by you and by God and rejoice with your wife. So life should be enjoyable, that we should be enjoying God and enjoying people with all the people. When we love them, there is enjoyment in love. When we love people, people enjoy that. Do you enjoy being loved by people, cared for by people? We enjoy that. Now, some people cannot enjoy that because even when the parents take care of them, they don't count it as a blessing. They think that is, you know, uh, it's just routine that the parents should take care of them. But we should all appreciate, appreciate how people take care of us, appreciate the sunshine, appreciate the rain, appreciate that we have water to drink, appreciate that we have delicious food, that we have God, the Holy Spirit. When we appreciate things, then we enjoy life. Now, many Christians lose this because they live under the law. It's all obligations, all responsibilities. Then it's all work, all work. It's always working, working, working. But we can enjoy life. And then if Christians enjoy God and enjoy life and enjoy each other and love each other, when people come into the church, they will say, wow, this is a church full of love. That we can enjoy each other, we can enjoy God, we can enjoy praying. Even when we pray, we can enjoy God. We say, God, you're so beautiful. God, you're so wonderful. I enjoy you. I enjoy your peace. And we enjoy each other when we greet each other. So I hope you enjoy each other. Now at this point, you can Said to the, say to the person next to you, I enjoy being with you and God bless you and I love you and we love each other. So we all love each other as brothers and sisters. But of course the love of brothers and sisters is different from the love uh, between husband and wife. That is very different love because the love between husband and wife is that we are, have a union into one body. So that is that should be the highest love on earth. Now our highest love should be with God, but on earth here, our highest love should be with our spouse. And uh, so I hope that you have this goal. When you have a loving relationship with your spouse, 
then you can enjoy your marriage. So I hope we all repent of the ways how we have not taken our marriage seriously, how we have not listened to our wife, how we nag, how some people nag the husband, and just argument and emotions. Now many people think when we are emotional, then we have to yell. Now when we are unhappy, we can talk about it peacefully. So it's both sides. The man should learn to listen to the wife and care about the wife and love the wife. And the wife should learn to uh, manage her emotions by having a close relationship with God. So when she's unhappy, she just tells the husband. Now when the husband loves her, then she, it's easier for her to be peaceful. And then she can tell him and guide him and say, uh, if you listen to me, I'll be very happy. When you listen to me, I'm very happy. When we have good communication, I'm very happy and I feel blessed. The wife should tell the husband, I feel blessed when you love me, when you listen to me. Now my wife always shows that to me. Whenever I say anything nice to her, do anything nice to her, she would really laugh happily. She would enjoy that. So that's part of life. Enjoy the blessings of God. Enjoy the blessings from people. And then, then in life, it's not just responsibility, but also we have good feelings. So I hope you understand this, and then you say, Yes, Lord, help me. Help me to, to build up a, a, a loving marriage, a marriage with love. Okay? And also many people thought to change someone or to yell at someone, but actually yelling is not a good way. Uh, many people had wrong concepts. They think that yelling would change things, but actually um, it, it doesn't work. Now, today we'll talk about how about if, now, if one side doesn't want to change. Now, of course, if both sides want to change, today when you go home, I hope you say to your spouse and say, I really want to work on the marriage. And uh, you can encourage them to watch this again on Facebook and look for Pastor Yip. And also in YouTube, in Pastor Yip. Uh, but in YouTube, you put the two words together, Pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R and then Y-I-P together. And then you can find my channel. And you can look for the English videos. And then you look, uh, you can see those uh, videos. And I have many videos about marriage and about handling our emotions and how to communicate with people. And yesterday we have talked about it's better to use words of grace and say, I care about you, you are, you are important to me, uh, you, I appreciate everything you've done for me, I'm, I'm happy to have you. Uh, it's God's blessing that we have this marriage. So it's, it's important that we communicate this with, with the spouse and then apologize for anything we've done wrong and then and then we'll say I'm happy to you know we we want to build up each other and then uh, build up good communication and have a loving relationship so we should go home and talk with the spouse and say I want to build up this relationship now if both sides want to work on it that is wonderful but sometimes <clears throat> there are people who are married to a non-Christian now, so that's something unfortunate. Uh, if that happened already, then there has to be some suffering. Um, because, you know, maybe sometimes they got married before one of them came to be a, uh, became a Christian. So that happened already, and that's something we cannot change. <clears throat> so what if the other person doesn't want to change, doesn't want to work on the marriage, then what can we do? So here, yesterday, we talked about that we need to get into healing from God, that we have a close relationship with God so that we are comforted by God, and then we have peace from God, and then we put down the burdens and the hurts and say, it doesn't matter what happened in the past, I just put down. And also daily, the hurts daily, we have to neglect, we have to turn down all the hurts daily. If we are living in a situation then the spouse is not willing to change. Now sometimes we need to change first. Sometimes it's 
that we don't want to change, and then we ask the other person to change. Now, that is a problem. So we need to change first and need to apologize and say, I'm sorry for what I've done wrong, please forgive me, and I'm willing to work on it, and, and I hope we can enjoy each other, that we have harmony, and we have an enjoyable relationship, so we can express that. But if the other person is not willing, now for instance, if the other person is a drunkard, he likes to drink and he's out of control, he has strong emotions and is always get angry or frustrated, then in a situation like that, we have to have strength from God, have the comfort from God, have the peace from God. So every day we need to spend time with God and enjoy God. Oh Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful and enjoy God. Father, we love you and I know that when I love you, you are very happy with me and you bless me and I can put down my burdens and forget about the negative things. It's, it doesn't help to keep thinking about the negative things. So we need to put those things down. But you might say, well, it happens over and over again, every day, every day it happens. When we live with someone who is not willing to change, that's the only way. If we get angry because the other person doesn't change, then the situation will get worse. Then it will become a, a fight or a divorce. That, and that's even worse. So the best thing we can do is not to take those words seriously. One expression I use is, don't eat garbage. But don't tell the other person what you say is garbage. Don't say that. And don't say that he's a garbage. He's not garbage. He just have sins, and the sins are garbage. And we don't have to take those negative words. We don't have to eat them. Sometimes people eat the negative words. They repeat thinking about these negative things. They keep thinking about these negative things. They say, oh, he said this to me. Oh, it's terrible, it's terrible. They keep thinking about that, and it only makes us hurt more. So. If your spouse is not willing to change, then we can only change ourselves. That we don't take his words heavily, we just turn it off. When he said, you're useless, I don't like you. Then we turn around and say, and use God's word to replace it. Even though he doesn't like me, God likes me. God loves me. God wants to bless me. I'm precious. So replace those negative words with positive words. Now this is something we deal with anyone who are negative toward us, who yells at us, whether it's a spouse or anyone, anyone in the world that treat us like that. Then we have to say in ourselves, in our heart, it doesn't matter. Because God has a wonderful plan in my life. When I love God, God will prepare for me things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. That he, God will prepare for me good things, even though some people mistreat me. Now let me tell you, my teaching of this joyful victory. Now I have this book in Chinese called Joyful Victory, that what it says is, you know, it, we have a loving relationship with God, and then take care of all the sins, all the negative thinking and emotions, all the problematic relationship, marriage problem, ministry problem, and take care of all this problem. And the third part is how to make the best use of our life, to bear fruit for God. So this is my book. I have a simplified version in English. So God gave me this teaching that if someone mistreats me, that is because they have sinned. They have been hurt by other people too. They have been hurt by other people all their lifetime. Therefore, they want to hurt people. They, the only way they relate to people is to hurt people. I have a saying, sinful people cannot stop hurting people. So they just cannot stop hurting people. So what can I do? I don't want to eat his sins. I don't want to take his sins internally. I want to turn off to those sins. When he said, you're useless, I would say to myself, God sees that I'm useful. 
I'm useful in the kingdom of God. I can bless many people. My life can bless many people. My life will have many fruits. And I have a purpose in life. So we find the joy of life from God, not from negative people. We have to turn off. The, we have to turn off the negative things from people. Now actually, because I have been hurt by people in the past, and after I became a Christian, and also after I was filled with the Holy Spirit, God taught me this, not to take the garbage. If God is for us, I am not afraid. What can mere man do to me? That's Psalm 118, verse 6. Psalm 118, verse 6. What can mere man do to me? They cannot steal my blessings. When I love God, God will give me things eyes have not seen that people cannot imagine so nobody can steal away the good things from me therefore I whenever even when someone talks to me negatively face to face I will look at that person but inside me I will say it doesn't matter what he says doesn't matter God is loving me now and God is very happy now that I say no to what he said in my heart I say no but when I speak to him, I ask God for wisdom, how to talk to him in a gentle way. I'll say, if he says, okay, uh, you forgot to do certain things, he said it in a very angry tone, then I say, okay, I'm sorry, I'll try my best to remember, and I try not to repeat the mistake again. So I try to be nice. And uh, if he says, oh, uh, you cannot do anything well, then I will say, Okay, I'll work on it. Tell me how I can improve. I'll work on it. I'll pay attention to it. I'm sorry for if I did anything wrong. So I would say things gently to him and not to be affected by him. So that's something we can learn. And I thank God that he has taught me this after I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we're not affected by people. <coughs> you might say that's very difficult. I want to say this, it's more difficult if we yell back at him. If we yell back at him, it's more difficult, it's more painful. Okay, so let's continue with this. And then, So we get comfort from God and live in the peace and love of God and no burden. And treat the person with peace and love. We, nice, we still want to be nice to the person. And being nice to him may influence him gradually and then have realistic expectation, lower our unrealistic expectation. That means, you know, if he's always angry, don't expect him to be calm and peaceful. When he's angry, that's my expectation. That's how he is. All the time, it doesn't matter. When he's angry, I just say, well, that's his problem. I don't have to take it seriously. So I hope you all learn this. this it takes time to learn it. I've learned it whenever I see anyone talking impolitely, I'll, I just won't take it seriously. I just would put it down and ask God, how should I respond to him? <clears throat> and so we pray for wisdom and love to treat him or her, and maybe there's a possibility I can change that person. So, so how not to be affected by family members that we accept the sinfulness of people and not to be affected by them? Thank you.